Welcome back again, lords and ladies. It's time for part two of our section on feudalism. Last time in the last screencast, we looked at feudalism, the political relationship between uh, lords and vassals, between kings and high-ranking nobles and those people to whom they gave land and, and how in return uh, the vassals provided loyalty and military service. Well, now we're going to go on an even smaller level than that, and we're going to look at the relationship between the uh, feudal lords and the people who lived on their land, something called manorialism. So the subject of today's screencast is manorialism and life on the feudal manor for those who lived it. And so uh, as we go through this here, we'll first uh, define what manorialism is, and then we will more closely examine the relationship between the feudal lords and the commoners, the peasants and serfs, who lived on their land, who lived on the manors, and, and how did this function uh, under this particular system. Uh, and then we'll focus in specifically on the lives of those people who lived on the manors. What was it like for the average peasant or the average serf who had to live and work on a feudal manor during this time period? Those are the essential questions. That's what we plan to cover. Thus, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's begin. Okay, so feudalism is the political relationship between uh, the lords and their vassals. But manorialism is the economic relationship that exists between the nobles, the landowners, uh, and the people who live on their land. Okay, And the manor system, manorialism, is an economic system that develops out of the political system of feudalism. Okay, So feudalism is political. That's lords and vassals. Manorialism, this is an economic relationship between the feudal lord and the people who live on their land. And manorialism, uh, this system is what provides the feudal lords with their wealth. This is where they get their wealth from. The wealth of the feudal lords is produced through the labor of the peasants and serfs who live on the land and work the land, those who farm, those who build. The wealth of the noble, of the feudal lord, comes from the common people who live on that land. And manorialism is largely centered around a system of agricultural production. Basically, the way that it works is the peasants and serfs are allowed to live uh, on the land. They're allowed to live on the fief by the lord, and the lord provides them with protection. So the feudal lord, the ruler, the owner of the fief, allows these commoners, these peasants and serfs, to live on the land, provides them with protection in what is a dangerous world. In return... The peasants and serfs agree to work on the land. So you've got this, this feudal lord has a fief and it's full of farmland. The peasants and serfs, they work the land. They work the crops. They take care of the livestock. Uh, they work the land and they provide the feudal lord with, with food, with crops. Uh, they make various payments in the form of goods and services. Um, basically put, you can live on the lord's land if you're a peasant, you're a serf. You live on the Lord's land. He provides you with protection, lets you stay there uh, in, in a dangerous world. And in return, you sort of pay rent through your labor, through your services. You pay rent by farming his fields. Uh, and as payment, you provide a large portion of the crops that you grow to the feudal lord. So you work his fields, you work his land, you grow crops for him. And after harvest time, you'll pay, you know, something, I mean, Technically, they're his crops, so you'd pay something like 90% of what you grew as a payment to the Lord as sort of your rent. If you're a farmer, that's what you do. Or if you uh, are a shepherd and you have sheep, um, you know, whatever you produce, the sheep's wool, you provide that to the Lord as payment. If you are a carpenter, you do woodworking as payment to the Lord. You may build a bridge. You may fix a barn. You may uh, fix a creaky floorboard in the manor house or, or put up a door. Whatever it is that you do, if you're a blacksmith, you use your skills and your goods and services as payment to the Lord for being able to live on his land. And this is where the wealth of the feudal Lord comes from. He gives you protection as a commoner, and in return, your relationship with him is that you get to live on the land, but you pay through providing your goods and your services. And these manors or estates, uh, they include, you know, everything that you'd need in order to have a small community. You have the Lord's Manor home. Uh, it's largely based on farming, so you'd have to have pastures, fields, forests for wood. Uh, you'd need a village where your peasants and serfs would live. See, we know that this is a violent time, and the constant threat of warfare and invasions, it's, it's all around you. And for that reason, travel is practically impossible. 
Uh, you rarely ever left the place where you lived. Uh, you really, you, you didn't go probably beyond a 10 mile radius of, of where you lived because it was just too dangerous. The world has become a much, much smaller place. That's another way in which Europe has regressed since the fall of Rome. The world's become a much smaller place. And because you rarely left the feudal manor in which you lived, these estates, these feudal manors had to be completely self-sufficient. Everything the manor needed to survive had to be derived from uh, or produced on the manor's lands. You had to have the village where the peasants lived. You needed the fields to be able to grow the crops. You had to have your own mill to grind down the grain. Uh, you needed a water source, be it a river, probably a moving water source. You probably needed a standing water source in the form of a pond or a lake of some kind. You needed wooded areas to provide lumber. You needed fields uh, for your livestock to graze. You needed everything that it took to survive there on the feudal manor. And, and life on the feudal manor is tough. You know, life on the feudal manor is tough. And I'm not going to pretend that life is easy for, for the lord of the manor or for the nobles, but life is extra difficult if you're the common people. On a feudal manor, peasants and serfs live in extreme poverty and with tremendous hardships. Typically, these folks work from sunrise to sunset six days a week. And the only day that you get to rest, as you might guess, is Sundays. Okay, Sunday's the only day off that you would get, or other religious holidays. And there was typically one religious holiday per month, and you would uh, get to be off on that particular day. But, I mean, it was, it was very hard work. You worked constantly year-round, sunrise to sunset. And in times of war, your common people, your peasants and your serfs, they're the ones who are always the hardest hit. In a time of war, because these are the people that provide the Lord with his wealth, the enemy is going to target them first, burning their villages, destroying their fields, killing them, because that is what provides the strength and wealth for the feudal Lord. And then, even worse, in times like these, the Lords would usually ask for additional payments of crops and of labor from his common people. So it is a very difficult life being a peasant or a serf during this time period. And, you know, how do peasants and serfs live, really, on a daily basis? Uh, their homes were very, very small, because we have to remember these people are incredibly poor, uh, tended to be tiny, one-room homes uh, with dirt floors, usually some straw, no chimney. So if you built a fire inside, you know, it's, you can imagine the, the place filling with smoke. Uh, usually you have maybe one, maybe two pieces of furniture uh, in the whole place. And, and you can kind of see towards the bottom here, picture in the middle, good example of what they would call a hovel, a peasant house. Uh, and this is a very good example of what you might see on the inside of one of those houses. Very barren. Uh, obviously, these people are living in great poverty, huddled together on the floor for warmth. Uh, usually, if, if it's not on the bed, then you know, you've know you got uh, straw or hay. And if you had any farm animals, this would be even better. If you happen to own any farm animals of your own, you didn't have your own barn, so you know where the animals slept. Yeah, they slept in the house with you. And you can just imagine how nasty all of that would be. Uh, the diet of these people is, is incredibly poor, generally consisting of only uh, coarse bread, uh, maybe a few vegetables that they manage to grow from their own gardens. On very, very, very rare occasions, meat. Meat is not a normal part of the diet for common people. Meat is typically reserved only for the nobility. And it was very difficult for common people to get a hold of meat because it's not like you could go into the forest and just hunt game and kill a deer because in legal terms that land belonged to the Lord and thus everything in the forest belonged to the Lord. And so if you hunted from the Lord's forest, you were technically stealing from the Lord. And in a lot of cases, uh, the punishment for being caught hunting was death because you were stealing from your feudal Lord. So you weren't allowed to hunt and get meat. It doesn't mean nobody did it, but certainly you weren't generally allowed to do so. And to make matters worse, I mean, hygiene was absolutely terrible for these people during this time period. They rarely ever washed. Uh, and the part of your body that you did wash with any regularity was your hands and your face. I mean, at least, you know, they had some sense about them. But as it goes, as in terms of taking baths, these people bathed maybe once a year, maybe once a year. And you think about how clean the Romans were bathing every day. You think of us with our, you know, showers and hot water and whatnot. These guys bathed once per year. And typically bath time for common people during this time period was spring or summer, you know, uh, uh, May or June after you've had a whole year worth of nastiness kind of building up on you. Uh, incidentally, the most popular month for weddings back then happened to be June, right after your yearly bath, I guess. Well, as a result of, of the life that these people led, 
the hard work, the poor diet, the poor hygiene, average life expectancy was very, very short. Average life expectancy was maybe about 30 years, uh, and very, very few people managed to live beyond the age of 40. So life was very difficult, and life was very short for common people, peasants and serfs, on the feudal manor during this time period. All right, well, today we took a brief look at uh, life on the feudal manor. We sort of defined what manorialism is, manorialism being that economic relationship between the feudal lord and the people who live on their lands. And we looked at the way that relationship worked, the way that uh, the feudal lord allows the peasant and serf, the commoners, to live on their land uh, for protection. And in return, the commoners provide payments of working the land and, and giving the lord what it is that they produce. And then we spent some time looking at what life is actually like for these common people who live on the feudal manors. It, uh, it was tough, it was dirty, and it tended to be short. Uh, those are the essential questions. That's what we covered. Be ready to talk about these things the next time that we meet. And as always, until that time, I bid you a fond farewell.